So today I'm interviewing a lender, Jen Ness, who I've um, used for the last couple of years. She's with Summon Funding. Um, They're excellent. And we're gonna head on inside, ask her a couple of hard questions and see what she says. Let's do it. All right, so I'm here with Jeunesse Howery. No, Jeunesse Graham. Grantham. I got she married. Got married. <laughs> um, but we're gonna ask you some hard questions about interest rates, um, what it's like to get a loan, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get to it. Um, well, first off, tell me how long have you been in Yeah, mortgage? so I have been in mortgage for 10 years now, which is crazy. Um, I was an assistant for six of that, so I was in the weeds doing all of the loan stuff, taking applications, working with underwriters, all the, all the minutia of loans. And then since 2022, I've been a loan originator. So actually meeting with clients, doing the loan origination, helping people get pre-approved, that kind of thing. Nice. So today is September 18th. There's a big Fed rate drop today. Yes. What does that mean? How does that affect mortgage rates? Yeah. And how does it like how how does that affect rates? Absolutely. So the Fed announced that they're dropping the Fed rate half a percent. And that affects short-term interest rates. So that's going to affect your home equity line of credit um, interest rate, your car interest rates, your credit card interest rates. Ironically, it doesn't affect mortgage interest rates. Mortgage interest rates are tied to the bond market. So different. Okay. So, so it's different. So the Fed, the Feds met over the last two days and they analyzed all of this data, economic data. And our market has been reacting to it for the past two months. So we've actually been seeing rates decline since July through August. We saw some significant decreases and interest rates are down about two percentage points from last October. Wow. And we're down about a full percentage point since May. So, so what is what is the rate like today yeah. if someone wants to go out? So average rates right now are gonna float around six and a half percent, I would say. It's gonna depend obviously on a whole bunch of factors, but you could see rates anywhere from the low six percent range to the mid six percent range is is what I would say is typical Credit, right now. Different Credit, factors. different loan programs, okay. things like that. So, but having this rate drop, in theory, the it's, rates will go down at some point. Rates will continue to go down. So, really, okay. what the Fed? So, you have Fed interest rates and you have mortgage interest rates, and mortgage interest rates are going to follow inflation data. So, as inflation continues to go down, mortgage interest rates will continue to go down as well. So ultimately, we'll see people react positively because they're going to think that mortgage interest rates went down. But yep. in reality, right. they've actually already gone down and gone down much more than a, than a half a percent. So they've been factored in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And projections right now from the, the big, big wigs that pay attention to that stuff. So your Fannie Mae's, your Freddie Mac's, um, big banks like Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, things like that. They're all estimating that rates are going to be around 6% from now through the end of the year. And then we'll start, we'll continue to see that trend into 2025, 2025, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, towards the end of that year, we might see things dip into the 5% range. So okay. it really just depends on how the economic data continues to trend. But as of right now, we're seeing what we wanna see to have mortgage rates stay down. So if I wanna go buy a house or get pre-approved to buy a house, what does that process look like? What are the steps that I do to get a loan? Mm-hmm. So, I'm your first step. So I'm going to have a conversation with you just to get an idea of what your goals are. But ultimately, you're going to fill out a loan application for me that allows me to pull credit, look at your income and assets. You're going to provide me supporting documentation such as pay stubs, bank statements, taxes, W-2s to make sure that all that income is accurate and I can calculate it appropriately based on how mortgages are required to calculate income. And then you fill out that application, provide the documentation. I do all the analysis and you can be pre-approved in two hours. So, so if I filled out an application and you were able to review everything, couple hours, same day, next yep, day type same thing? Same day, yeah. Okay. And if we get more in depth, what I like to do is have clients come and sit down face to face with me so I can really analyze their goals and educate them on what the process looks like because mm-hmm. there is so much that goes into a mortgage. It's not it's not just buying a house, right? We wanna make sure that right. we're, we've got a monthly payment that supports your budget that you're shopping for in a purchase price range that meets the needs that you need in a house. Gotcha, so when you get a pre-approval um, from a lender, how so how long does that last? How long is that good for? Yeah, so it's really as good as your credit report's good for. So as long as nothing's changed in terms of you've changed jobs, income's changed, yeah. um, 
you yeah, paid can't be some, buying cars. Can't be buying cars, okay. yep. So you haven't bought anything that's going to change your profile. Okay. It's, it stays active, but credit reports expire depending on the loan program ni after 90 to 120 days. So we're going to go a couple loan misconceptions that you hear. I've, I've had clients ask me this too. So 20% down, I don't have 20% down. What do I do? Like, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do they? Do you, does someone need twenty percent down to get a loan? Don't need twenty percent down to buy a house. It's okay. probably the number one misconception that there is. It used to be that way years and years and years ago, but now you can buy a house with no money down. You can buy a house with three percent down, um, three and a half percent down for an FHA loan, but you could do it with zero percent down. And then the next tier up, I would say, is three to three and a half. So that's gotcha. Very so it obviously money. changes your payments, but um, you don't need a huge chunk down in mm -hmm. order yeah yeah got it and i always tell folks too if you're in a position where you don't feel like you have enough money to put down or you're not in a position to buy a house just it doesn't hurt to get pre-approved call right. and and go through at. the process yeah. and we don't even need to fill out an application if you just have questions and you want to be educated on what you do need to do i'm always happy to have those conversations with clients because it's never too early to start that process of making sure that you're making the right choices yeah that and, way you're ready and, to go mm -hmm, yeah when you exactly. do find the right house exactly i've had so many people look at a house and they're just not prepared mm -hmm. um then they rush to get everything into the lender and oh, the house is pending. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> they get frustrated because they wanted that house, but they've now they've already done the process. And so they're kind of like starting to consider other houses. So right. get pre approved, even if you're small, it's a glimpse of thinking about it. Yeah. It's a lot easier in the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, and just with like, I can't tell you how many people I've sat down with who are like getting evicted or they, you know, they have to, their, their hand has been forced in needing to make their next move, whether they're going to be renting or buying and they mm -hmm. want to look at buying. But they come and meet with me and I'm like, you have some homework to do. And if they would have had that conversation with me a year ago, they would be ready now. And so again, it's never too early to just, it's not a commitment to have to buy a house within the next 30 or 60 days. You, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a conversation to get you educated and know what you need to do. So tell me about credit. So mm -hmm. if I, if I'm in the 600s, I'm in the 500s, mm -hmm. high 500s, do I have a chance? Do I need to get a rescore? Kind of depends on income. Yeah. But like, where would you say, What's like a good goal to work up to? I would say if you have a 620, you should be able to get a mortgage in most scenarios. Okay. Okay, that's, so that's 620 a good... is a good like baseline. However, there are programs that will allow you to have as low as a 580, sometimes even a 550. Generally, you need to have some compensating factors like more money to put down, things like that. But if you 620 is a really good goal to be at. And if you're lower than that, again, call a mortgage professional who will take the time to work with you on how to build your credit up to get to the point where you can't buy a house. Got it. Next question would be debt. So you can obviously have debt. You can have, you know, car payments, um, student loans. Mm -hmm. Are student loans factored in differently? Yeah. It, so student loans are a little bit tricky and it, it's, a misconception I have clients ask about a lot is like, oh, I have debt that I need to pay down before mm -hmm. I can get pre-approved. I'm like, that's not necessarily the case. If you have if you have auto loans, if you have student loans, like you can still buy a house. I'll, absolutely. It just it depends on your particular circumstances. So debt to income, so debt so to income ratio is a Got big it. thing. Um, but you can have debt and buy a house, absolutely. And right. then with student loans specifically, so there's a lot of these are even more person by person just because some people are in deferment. Um, some people are in income-based repayment plans, and so every scenario is a little bit different as far as how we calculate those student loans. Um, if it's in deferment, sometimes it's just a percentage of your loan balance. If you have an income-based repayment plan, oftentimes we can just use that. Mm -hmm. So, But I do a lot of coaching with clients around, okay, this is how the student loans sit, and this is what needs to happen in order to be able to count a lower payment or gotcha. this, that, So you kind of get a game plan going. Mm -hmm. Got it. Exactly. So here's our question. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm a person looking to purchase a house and I, you know, I have a local bank that I bank with and I have my friends have a lender they'd use, why, why would I call you at Summit? Like why, you know, yeah, what why benefits <laughs> is there to call Jeunesse at Summit and, um, you know, get yeah. a loan with you guys? Absolutely. So ultimately customer service is where we shine by a by and far above any other lender, I would say you, when you apply with me, you get my cell phone number. I'm available on the weekends. So you and I have worked together plenty of times yep. to know that, Hey, it's... <laughs> I need a <laughs> like, to, right now. It's Sunday night. 
Yeah. Yep. So yeah, working weekends and you're not going to get that with a banker credit union most yeah. of the time. They're, they work business hours and that's when you get them. So working with me specifically, you're going to be able to have access to me outside of those normal eight to five or nine to five hours, Monday through Friday. Nice. Um, one thing that will, that I've seen come into play depending on the market is having an appraisal panel that is very reputable. So getting an appraisal that comes in at value and not low and with as few conditions as possible can make or break a deal in a, with yeah. a transaction. So we have a very specific appraisal panel that have, they all appraisers need to meet certain standards in order to pass and be allowed to stay on our appraisal panel. So that makes it so we run into very few appraisal issues. I will say too, so obviously I've used Jeunesse for a while, but the ease of a transaction, um, I mean, Jeunesse is on top of it. She has um, the underwriting asking like clear and concise questions. Um, if they need something, they get back to you. Um, it's just more of like, you run into less um, complications, I guess I would say. And another thing to consider is lenders like Jeunesse, they do a lot of save deals. So other people, you know, people apply with other banks and different things and then for whatever reason, their lender's having a hard time working that out. I know you do a, like a lot of save deals mm -hmm. um, work the magic and make it happen. So yeah. that's a huge benefit. Yeah. I, I think what I've, and especially like if clients have had an experience with another lender and then come to me later, the differences that I see is that face-to-face -face appointment that I referenced earlier, mm -hmm. where if we sit down and we can set expectations and go through your full scenario up front, and that's the first step, it will save you so much more of a headache down the road yeah, because we've you, already gone through, hey, these are the hurdles that we could run into. These are the things that I foresee being issues and we're gonna create a game plan around those now versus later. Here's a random one. What's the biggest question you get? Is it 20% down? Did we already touch on that? Is that the biggest question well, you I, get? That's a big one. One that I actually have had a lot is do, do I need how much how long do I have to be on my job so oh, that's good. generally people it like the rule that you hear just the rule of thumb is you have to be on your job for two years in order to qualify for a mortgage that's actually not necessarily the case really what we're looking at is risk analysis and stability but if you were somebody who was self-employed and you decided you didn't want to be self-employed anymore and you went and got a w-2 normal paycheck earning job mm -hmm. you can actually you can buy a house the next day I can just use an offer letter as long oh, as it's in similar lines of work and there's again there's stability and kind of common sense around it if you will gotcha. um, and then if you've recently changed jobs so I have one right now where I've got a school counselor who went from one school to another we're using that income right away even though he just started at the new school so you don't necessarily have to have two years on your job we just want to make sure that there's stability and, and the scenario is kind of a make sense scenario awesome well <clears throat> that's probably enough questions for today so thanks for all the info. Thanks for sharing. Um, Janess Howery, I'll put her, oh, I always get that wrong. <laughs> Janess Grantham. Grantham. <laughs> um, I'll put her business card in the video so you guys can contact her if you have any other questions. And um, thanks for your time today. Absolutely. Thanks, Eric. Right. Bye, guys. Bye.